We all do it. We do it every day. We do it all day. We almost never not do it. What is it? We analyze movement. We even have common metaphoric phrases in the English language that we use that give meaning to movement. Well, how many of you have ever said, hey, don't get your back up? Or, did you see her look down her nose? How about, she really stuck her neck out for you? Or my favorite, can you please stand on your own two feet? Out of our conscious awareness, we observe movement and make meaning out of the nonverbal. We embed phrases like these into our everyday language and take our keen observation skills for granted. Here's another example. Think about a time you went to the airport and through a mass of people, you were able to pick out your friend based on the way that they move, even though you couldn't really see them. You somehow knew the way they carried their body. Perhaps it was their quickness in their walk or some other idiosyncratic way they moved. This is because you have been implicitly observing that person throughout your relationship. You may not call yourself a body language expert or movement analyst, but you definitely observe movement and you make sense of it every day. Dance movement therapists are body language experts. They analyze movement in conscious, intentional ways in every session they lead. Through years of training in psychotherapy, dance movement therapy, and movement observation and assessment, dance movement therapists are equipped to understand the body's nonverbal expression. I'll explain a bit more how that occurs shortly, but for now, let me tell you a little bit more about nonverbal communication. A well-known anthropologist by the name of Ray Birdwhistle, an early pioneer in the study of nonverbal communication, stated back in 1970 that 65% of communication is nonverbal. About the same time, another researcher by the name of Albert Morabian stated that about 95% of communication was based on nonverbal. I've heard varying statistics on how much communication is based on the nonverbal, which includes body language, tone of voice, and a number of other factors besides a spoken word, and it's always somewhere around 80%. Imagine that. People are only cueing into about 20% of what we're actually saying with our words, and 80% or more, they are looking at our nonverbal communication. Well, how is this possible? Well, from the day we are born, our mirror neurons are firing, taking in information about human movement. Mirror neurons are a relatively new discovery. Scientists have found that we actually have a system in our brains that is all about observing movement. So we have this ability to observe someone's movement and our mirror neurons fire, creating similar motor circuits in our brains as if we're performing the same movement that we're observing. How many of you have ever been to a dance concert and found yourself flinching, right? Mm -hmm. As if you were performing that same movement that you were observing? Those are your mirror neurons at work. As human beings, we instinctively observe, assess, and interpret movement all the time. But sometimes we are incorrect about our interpretations because movement from person to person doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. Carolyn Moore, notable scholar and Laban movement analyst, suggests that this may be a result of our body knowledge or what we know about human movement based on our own movement history. When this occurs, our body knowledge isn't matching up with someone else's truth and therefore becomes a body prejudice. Okay, funny story and time for a little self-disclosure. I realized I needed to keep my body knowledge in check when I discovered that my son and I have a very different approach to time. While I rush about and hurry in an abrupt way with time, my son luxuriates in it. <laughs> for a long while, I thought he would be late to school and that he was lackadaisical. Until I realized that, no, he always made the bus on time and always got his homework in on time, too. 
he wasn't lazy or slow. He just had a different approach to time than I did. I could finally relax and stop hounding him to hurry up. So as a dance movement therapist, we can easily misinterpret someone else's nonverbal expression if we are not aware of our own movement preferences and prejudices that we hold about movement. We need to ensure that our clients are seen as themselves as opposed to a projection of our own body knowledge and our own personal history. So the million dollar question is, well, how do dance women therapists objectively observe and assess movement? Many dance women therapists utilize Rudolf Laban's system of movement analysis that breaks down movement into its basic component parts. Developed by Laban in the early 1900s, this taxonomy is used in various fields of study, including but not limited to dance, theater, industrial work study, and physical education, not to mention within the field of DMT. Laban's taxonomy provides dance women therapists with an objective framework and language from which one can describe, assess, and create movement interventions. We also use this tool to become aware of our own personal preferences and prejudices so that we are better equipped to keep them in check within the therapeutic relationship. Laban's taxonomy consists of four interrelated categories body, effort, space, and shape. By using Laban's taxonomy, we can answer a series of questions about movement so that we may intervene on this nonverbal level to help our clients meet their goals and improve their overall health and well-being. So body asks the question, what part is moving? That would be my arm. Effort asks the question, how is it moving? That would be quickly. Space asks the question, where is it moving? This is right side high and I move up my vertical plane. And shape asks the question, why am I moving? And that would be to get your attention. The answers to the questions of what, how, where, and why are mostly objective and are based on the skilled lens of the observer therapist. The answers are also what dance women therapists use as their primary tool for intervention and assessment because we believe that movement meets a need, whether functional or expressive. We also believe that, that movement is an outward expression of one's internal world. From this analysis, the dance women therapist creates movement interventions to join his or her client in their nonverbal expression in order to build therapeutic, empathic, trusting relationships, to understand his or her movement patterns and develop a treatment plan and course of action, to facilitate the development of a broader movement vocabulary in order to improve overall healthier body, mind, and spirit. So I'd like to share an example with you. How many of you can feel your feet on the floor right now? Well, imagine you can't. Imagine that you don't believe that anything or anyone will support you, and you are all alone in this world to fend for yourself. Oh, and you're a child. This was the experience of one of my clients who had an extreme trauma history and attachment disorder. She learned not to count on people, not to trust people. During one of our sessions, I asked her to walk as if she didn't want to connect with the earth, like her feet were walking on sand. She walked around the room with her feet clenched for a little while. This intervention was created in order to metaphorically and physically represent how she pulled herself out of contact, out of relationship. This was based on my observations of her movement patterns that I saw over and over again in the course of our treatment together. I witnessed her bound effort flow, her concave upper chest, her darting eyes, and her small use of kinesphere. So I had her walk a second time. The second time I said, imagine that 
the bottoms of your feet are opening up and connecting with the floor and that the ground was coming up to meet her. She could experiment with a different way of contacting the earth by yielding instead. Peggy Hackney, certified movement analyst, suggests that this experience of yielding is one of the first ones that we have as babies that supports and creates bonding and connection between self and another. My client experimented with this new way of, of being in contact with the earth. And while she did that, I told her that even if she couldn't count on anyone else to be there for her, the earth would always be here to support her. She was overwhelmed with joy and peace at this newfound body knowledge when she experienced this. I created this movement intervention based on my observations and took into consideration her psychological needs. I encouraged her to expand her ability to yield and challenged her core belief that she was always alone in this world. So it is through the use of Laban movement analysis as an assessment tool that the dance and wind therapist can observe their client with a clear objective lens, meet them in his or her movement patterns. Identify areas of strength and weakness. Allow them to connect in the body category, their internal connections. Explore dynamic expressivity in the effort category. Develop interpersonal skills in the shape category and presence in the world in the space category. Laban movement analysis is one of many tools that dance and wood therapists can use to observe, assess, and intervene with their clients. However, by intervening through this body-based nonverbal approach, we are able to meet our clients in that 80% margin that humans implicitly understand. Thank you.